Post library in 30 seconds. Go to Edit, Preferences, File Paths and define a new path for your library browser assets. And now you can go into the editors and click Asset Browser or Shift F1. With that, you're going to get into this screen, which has different categories. In the animation category, you're going to be saving all of your poses in pose mode. So make sure you're in pose mode. And from there, whenever you apply a pose that you have previously stored, you can also right click on it and then apply pose. And this will also help the asset browser apply the pose that you previously stored. This create pose asset button right here only activates whenever you're in pose mode and whenever you select the bones that you're going to store. So click on that. A pop-up appears in the lower left section of your 3D viewport. Name your pose and you're done. Welcome to a new video. I've been wanting to show you this for a long time now and I finally got the chance and the time. So let's get right into it. As you may know, Blender 3 will ship with the new asset browser library in which you can configure most of your assets. And why is this useful? Because you can use those assets repeatedly in different productions. Or in this case, if you select the edit preferences file paths asset libraries, you can create new directories where you can pinpoint where you want to have all of the time all of your assets available. This could be shaders, this could be animation, this could be posing, this could be a lot of things like you see here. These categories are specifically arranged inside the asset browser. So you can open one of the editors and then you can come here into the asset browser. You can also switch to this by using the Shift F1 shortcut and in here you will find different collections or different uh, categories. Okay, this is our this is all part of how Blender stores its data. We have already talked about this plenty of times. And what you need to know is that the blend file itself is like a giant container that can classify different aspects of the data that is stored in. So that means that we can have collections, we can have geometry specifically in, in their own folders. We can have uh, shaders. The same thing goes for images, the environments, and also miscellaneous, which will store, for example, your freestyle strokes or some of the custom parameters or custom presets that you will have. And what I would like to present to you is the fact that you can now store your poses inside animations, as you can see here. These are the preset poses that I already picked for Fixie, which is our custom character for the Guilty Gear stylized shader blender training series and in there we show how we created her and now we can store her poses using the asset browser so the important thing is how you work with the asset browser itself there is a lot of information I would like you to read you can click here in the video description it will take you to my blog site and there you can see a lot of the details that I will be omitting in this video and from now on I think that will be a good thing to do like I would present to you the core things in the video and you can go to the blog and read full details about it so that will keep the video in a short time so in this side if you press N you will get the side panel the, the side panel for the asset browser okay press N and then you can see the preview right here let me see if I can make this bigger I'm pressing control middle mouse and pushing up okay so th that I can make this bigger so let's go through this um, categories so here we have the identifier for the name of the object okay that's kind of easy to to see and then we have the preview obviously this is the the preview for your pose and in here if you open you can load a custom preview to do that and it will help you choose an image to identify this data block or in this case this store the pose so if you click there you can target um, I think it's a PNG file make sure that it's something always squared I always use a 512 by 512 in the case that I need something big and detailed or just use 256 by 256 PNG file and then you'll be good to go then you will press refresh next we have details what kind of details are we going to be using to describe this pose. This is very useful because when you're not present and if someone inherits your file, they will want to see why you pose this character in this way. This will be mostly used for production purposes, like a winning pose or something. You will describe it here. 
tags. These are tags related to the posts that you create because if you have many assets inside your production, you will want to quickly identify them. In this case, we're working with a fighter, so I may use the, the tag fighter. Obviously, we, you want to use the character's name, so this one is called Fixie, Fixie. And maybe if we are tagging this specific pose for the A pose, then I will use Fixie A pose name. So it's basically just to find inside this whole browser something that you have previously tagged. And the post library itself, this is how you apply your actions from the post library, which is this one right here, into your own 3D scene. So let's say, for example, if I want to activate this this particular post then I will come here and then click just assign action and it will post it okay that was the part for the asset browser workflow now let's talk about the viewport whenever you're working in the viewport in blender 3 you will have this animation tab right here and you are required to work in pose mode if you're in object mode these things are not going to be activated you will not be able to touch and activate them or apply them so you need to be in pose mode and in pose mode of course you're going to pose your character and whatever muscles or in this case bones that you want to store you're going to select them and then you can create a new pose asset this will specifically store the positions of the bones that you have posted in this case okay so you create a new pose and then it will be created in this way when you do that let me see if i can just you know select all of that click create pose and you are going to name that pose over here. You're going to say, I don't know, uh, flipped arms or something like that. Okay. For now, ignore the errors. I have a lot of drivers working in, in this rig. So that's probably why I'm getting all those errors. But regardless, when you create the pose, you name the pose, in this case, flip arms. And three things are going to happen. The first thing that it's going to happen is that a new thumbnail is going to be created right here. You have to switch to the camera view by like this and then you create the post asset and that it's going to be uh, snapping a picture of her in this pose then the second thing that's going on it's that right here in the dope sheet in the action editor you're going to see that it that has recorded a keyframe so all of the things that I selected are now stored there and the third and final thing that is going to happen is that your new action is going to be placed right here. Like I mentioned before, please just ignore the previous errors. You're not going to get that in the, into the final version. I'm just giving you a sneak preview of how it's working at the moment. And like I mentioned before, I already did this with the previous uh, experimental branch that you can find in the description in the blog post. Or you can go to blender.org slash downloads experimental versions and then you can pick from the menu there all right that has been everything that i wanted to share with you and it is just fantastic and exciting to see how this is going to perform please visit the entire blog post at blender.org uh, because they describe how you can do many different things with this workflow you can save animations you can copy poses from blend files to another blend file and many other different things. So this is just a quick startup so that you can understand how it works, how it's connected, and the general idea to get the post library working here in Blender 3. Please go to read the blog post that it's on the video description down here below. And if you have any other questions, don't forget to write here in the comment section down below. My name is Pierre Schiller. I am a 3D animator and BFX compositor. Try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond industry compatible.